veganism is surging into the mainstream. Everyone's vegan now! Restaurants and supermarkets are rapidly expanding their vegan options. And the mainstream media is talking about veganism more than they ever have before. For our health, yeah. we don't need to, it's we unnecessary. Just, uh, just biologically um, uh, and, and in our development <laughs> as a species, uh, we've developed, we've, met, we've, we've grown canine teeth. Where? Canine Show me teeth. yours. Well, they look very flat and blunt like a cow's teeth. Oh, that's teeth. the molars at the back, so, but the canines... What is fueling this rise in interest? Part of it can be attributed to the influence of vegan celebrities like Miley Cyrus... I'm vegan! ...and athletes like Lewis Hamilton. I do feel the best I've ever felt in my life, in my 32 years. Physically, I feel the best I've ever felt. Uh, I feel incredibly clean and healthy. And groundbreaking documentaries like What the Hell. Everyone is buzzing about the Netflix documentary, What the Hell. The film challenges the way Americans eat and links meat and animal products to illness and is causing many to go vegan. In this special report, we take a look at one of the key engines that's been driving the growth of veganism over the last two years. Anonymous for the Voiceless, or AV, is an animal rights organisation that's known for its Cube of Truth street demonstration. Founded in April 2016 in Sydney, Australia by Australian couple Paul Bashir and Asal Alamdari, the Cube has now gone global, spreading to 441 cities in 56 countries. AV estimates that at least 84,000 people have gone away from their demonstrations seriously considering making the switch to a plant-based diet. So George, could you explain to us a bit about how the Cube actually works? So there's, it's sp sort of split up into two teams. Now the Cube team are actually the non-interactive part of the demo. So they have to stand there still, they don't talk, they're the guys that wear the masks or hold, and they hold the signs or they show the footage. Now it's their job to sort of just stand there, present them with the footage, the truth so to speak, and then the outreach team are the ones that actually engage with the public, uh, asking the public questions about the sort of footage that they're looking at, trying to get people to actually open up their minds and actually think about what they're buying when they go into a store, because most people don't actually think about it. Yeah, and what, what's the uh, the idea of the masks? What, what, do you, what does that bring to it? It's part of the, uh, the actual aesthetic and it's very effective because people are down the street and they think, hang on, what's going on here? And they actually want to go up and approach sort of and, and watch the footage. And it's that sort of statuesque feel that I think the mask gives about it. So you, you don't talk to those people, you're just there to, you know, they're the f sort of faceless people just, and the the, uh, the focus, so to speak, is on the footage yeah. that we're showing. So people feel more comfortable watching something if someone's not looking right at them, I guess. That's it, you wouldn't yeah. want to go up to someone and just sort of look them in the eye <laughs> as they're yeah, showing watch. you. The I'm here with John. Uh, John, what do you think of this going on here today? Uh, I think it's a uh, it's very good cause. Um, yeah. Something something does need to be said. The state the meat industry in particular is is pretty horrendous. I've seen I've seen a lot of these videos before, and it's good that like it's getting a lot more exposure. Right, right. People are seeing some things. So, so you're not vegan yourself, are you? No, no, I'm, I'm not even a vegetarian, right. which uh, makes me feel a little bit bad actually stood here. But yeah, it's something I've definitely thought about. You know. So so do you when you see these guys here, do you think of them as sort of militant, aggressive people? What do you think of these activists? Um, no, I mean I. Think I think I think the sort of the, the anonymous masks have got like a bit of a bad rep because um, sort of other like particular hate groups have um have used them yeah, before, yeah. and I must admit, when I walked down here, I was like, "Oh, what's this going on? You know, is it like EDL or something?" But as soon as I saw right. it, it was like uh, animals and stuff. I was like, "Oh yeah, fair game," you know. So you think they've got they, they got a fair point to be out here showing yeah. this stuff? Yeah, no, it is. It's definitely right. You know, if people don't say things, then you're never going to get change, are you? Sure. And change is what needs to happen. So, how important do you see this cube uh, demonstration well, to, to create new vegans? Uh, well, it's a very powerful form of activism. It's one of the most effective forms of activism I've seen, and if it's if the outreach is done correctly, it can be a very effective uh, communication there. Uh, obviously, bringing what happens in a slaughterhouse and on farms out into the public is a great way to steer the public away from consuming animal products. I don't know any other. Uh, I don't know a more powerful form of activism than showing someone what happens into a, in a slaughterhouse because it dispels the myth inside of their brain that they've manufactured through uh, some type of programming. So they go, "Wow, is that really what happens?" in a slaughterhouse yeah so the it, a slaughterhouse footage doesn't lie does it yeah and would you would you think the advantage of 
being out here showing and then be able to have a conversation rather than just sending people videos on Facebook and, and YouTube. What do you think the benefit is with when you can speak to people in real life? Well, because there's a danger in showing people slaughterhouse footage and animal cruelty footage because then they think, oh, without a conversation, they might think that they can just go buy a free range or go to the local butcher where they kill them humanely. But when you have an outreacher, you can explain to them, there's no humane way to do this. Yeah, this is horrible what's happening in this particular farm, but there's no humane way to uh, exploit an animal, yeah. to enslave an animal. So with an outreach, you can give them the full comprehensive uh, comprehensive abolition. So uh, Aaron, when did you go vegan? So it's been about two weeks now. Um, and literally it was because of the Cuba truth. Oh, that, right. uh, yeah, I literally just bumped into a guy and we had a long discussion and uh, he recommended the documentary What the House? And literally after that, vegan overnight, threw out all my chicken. <laughs> my chicken, my chicken, my chicken. Threw out all the chicken, <laughs> threw out all the milk, and literally stocked up on seeds, beans, lentils, vegetables, uh, soy milk, and yeah. Why can't, why can't everyone be like this guy, you know? This, why can't I, it should be this easy. Yeah, man. A lot of people think they think they might think of activism as like a chore, like they have to sort of do for the animals as like a thing they have to do. But I mean, do you find yourself in, quite enjoying the activism you do at the Cuba Tree? Oh, absolutely. It's, 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 it's thoroughly uplif uplifting. There's nothing, no better feeling than to go away and to think that you've lit a spark in somebody that they didn't have before they got here, and they can walk away with information. And I think they they don't see you as someone who's trying to sell them something. They only see what's on the cards. There's the truth, and I think. When you give people the truth, there's there's very little to come. Kind of, it's it? a powerful yeah. thing, yeah, absolutely. If you'd like to get involved, go to anonymousforthevoiceless.org and click locations to find your nearest cube. Then follow the link to join the Facebook group. If there's no cube in your area and you'd like to set one up, simply contact AV via Facebook Messenger. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Plant Based News Spotlight. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.